So are you ready to boondock? Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Well, this is the much anticipated basement tour of Orion. Orion was set up for boondocking and she does it very well. So let your imagination go wild on what you want to bring with you when you go camping in Orion. Let's get into the tour. So our first trailer the DRV we had them put this on there from the factory and they kind of looked at us and they said what are you doing why do you need that what this is, is this is an auxiliary power supply it runs off of the main system but we've moved it up front here so we have two we have this one and we have the one in the back it's a power outlet Allie, you said power supply oh that's right <laughs> man that'd be pretty cool that'd be pretty cool we have solar but we don't always have sun. And because of those days, we need a generator. This is an Onan gen set. It's a 12.5 kilowatt, and it runs obviously everything and probably could run our neighbors too. <laughs> uh, we don't run this a lot because of our batteries and because of solar, but we've got it just in case, and we've needed it a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, cloud cover, rain, so on and so forth. So. There it is. And it's run off diesel. Runs off diesel. We've got a 50 gallon tank that sits behind this and we fill it right here. And if we run out, we know where we can get 250 <laughs> gallons from. Yeah, really. Which we've had to do. And Voyager. Yeah, we've had to transfer uh, some fuel from Voyager into this, so on occasion. So when we do run off of batteries, we need inverters. These are two of them. We have four. These two are hybrids. We've designed the system so that it will run off of 50 amp. It'll run off of 15 amp or even 10 amp. Uh, we just set the hybrid inverters to whatever the shore power is and we're good to go. We're running everything. And we'll kind of explain that here in just a little bit how we can do that because we're one of the few out there, I think, that can run everything. On 15 amps, it could be 90 degrees outside, it could be 30 degrees. We're still able to have our heat, run our air, air conditioning, uh, refrigerator. The two induction cooktops. Induction cooktop, whatever. Soda machine. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we definitely need this for the soda machine. We can run it all, and we'll kind of explain that. But these are the two here, along with our panels. And the batteries, you can't see them, but they're on the other side of this wall. And we'll show you that as well. well speaking of chargers, you want to talk about your really cool charging station you put up? <laughs> I yeah. love that. And all That's your pretty cords. Cool. Yeah, so I organize this for our, our extra cords. And so when we do need to plug in, when this power cord here won't reach the pedestal, because sometimes it's way in the front, because we're so long, um, I need a cord up there. So that's what I'll use for the front power outlet. And you did a really good job <laughs> because this is a crooked floor. I don't know if you can see it, but he had to get a straight, a level shelf on a crooked floor. Yes. That looks really good. <laughs> Thank you. And then all your chargers, my goodness. Yeah, who says we're a, uh, a powerless society? We've got a lot of chargers up there. But this is nice and neat and uh, keeps them all charged all at the same time, including the drone and our battery packs on our bikes. <laughs> so we mentioned four inverters. Those two magnums supply our 120 volt leg one, leg two. And this is obviously when we're boondocking and we're not hooked up to shore power. The other two inverters 
are in here. They are Kotex, they are, we'll say, dumb inverters, they don't charge anything. They run, one of them runs our AC 240 and heat, volt. 240 volt. The other one runs our 240 volt induction cooktop. And the little spark that turns on the flame for the LP side. Those run off the batteries 100%. They're directly off the batteries, right? So everything will charge the batteries. Those two items, the HVAC, the LG mini splits, and our cooktop, both the LP and on the induction side, run off of the other Kotec, off the batteries. So wherever we're at, we we'll always have cooking and heating and cooling. That's how we can be on 10 amp or 15 amp power and still have all conveniences available to us. Uh, because the batteries, even if the batteries start to run down just a little bit because we don't have enough power coming into the coach, by nighttime when our power consumption goes down and hopefully the soda machine calms down, then that's when everything starts to charge back up and by the next morning we're back to 100%. So it's a beautiful system. We've used it a bunch because there's a lot of times campgrounds will look at us and they say, yeah, we don't have a place for you in the 50 amp and it's 90 degrees outside. And we say, that's okay, we'll take the 30. And they go, what? We go, no problem, we're good. And what's funny is people don't realize even on a 15 amp service, that's 43 kilowatts a day. That's a lot of power. And our batteries at 30 kilowatt hours, we've got enough power to last us several days. So there's no issues there. So on the 12 volt side, and we do have 12 volt uh, power requirements, uh, DC lights, water pumps, uh, and the jacks and the slides. And we, because of those heavy loads, uh, these slides are not real light and there are jacks are the heavy duty style so uh, they're pulling a lot of amps uh, about uh, 60 of them we didn't really find a dc power converter that was going to be able to handle that we felt like uh, with no problem so we've hooked up agms uh, i think it's class 16 uh, agms uh, to the system and that's really what sort of i'll say powers our 12 volt side and also the jacks and the slides. Those are constantly maintained through our lithium battery pack. And those are always uh, maintained at 13.23 uh, volts. So our, we always have constant power from that. And also just to let you know, our battery pack is, um, the lithiums are at 24 volt. It's a 24 volt system. All right, so I'm going to head up on the roof. We're going to talk about the solar. I don't have to climb up on the roof. I just like to. But I can tilt all the solar panels from this ladder on the side. Uh, I don't have to actually get up on the roof. And they all are on a, a gas strut. So I just uh, pop them up, get them up a foot or so, and then they will go up to about a 45 degree angle. Uh, Ten panels up there. Uh, 325 watts, so a total of 3250 watts of solar coming down at 24 volts into our battery pack. We've harvested as most as 25 kilowatts. I think it was more. But I th we think it was more. We think our system maxes on the display at 25. Because we've had days where it was sitting at 25 for, we had another several hours of good sun. So I think magnum's cheating us on the solar display i think we're getting more i think so too yeah but it does great and keeps us going and actually we've run out west uh, when there's good clear skies we've run man weeks and not weeks. run the generator and we've had the ac going uh and microwave microwave dryer, you've used dryer. the induction cooktop yeah yeah so uh it, it's done really fantastic for us and actually, even when we're boondocking, I'd say 80% of the time I'm using the induction cooktop instead of the gas. Yes, yeah, very true. All right, our system that's near and dear to my heart, no matter what you're thinking. <laughs> and other things that he's sitting on. Exactly, is the sewer system. This is a drain master. 
and this is super cool it's like a the the connection method is like what you see on these fuel trucks um, it's a double action and it uh, clamps around it it does not leak and it is heavy duty this thing I can make a turn and when I'm dumping black that pipe does not move which is really nice because some of those RV hoses you know you get around that curve and you're pushing some weight I'll say uh, you gets all wonky and it starts pushing it out this bad boy it sits tight so this is really nice when we built this uh, we built it so that I could store forgive the mess <laughs> but uh, I could store the hose back in there uh, it's uh, and it goes all the way the length of the trailer or yes. the width of the trailer and it's uh, hermetically sealed uh, to a certain degree but uh, it doesn't uh, there's no outlet uh, inside the trailer so once I put it in there the only outlet would be coming back out this way uh, which is really nice uh, some spares I got a spare length of hose this will go about 28 feet and then I've got a connection that I can expand this to basically about 50 feet which is nice I've only had to use that like once or twice but it was really handy to have when I did need it so we've got three waste tanks uh, black galley which is right here and gray uh, 55 gallon on the galley uh, 55 on the black tank and 100 on the gray tank. Uh, they are, for the most part, this one's on the outside of the frame rail. Uh, the others are inset up inside the frame rail. So a lot more storage space. Uh, it allows for a lot more space going back through here. And really is nice. We can go almost a week with normal usage and not having to dump. So that's pretty, uh, that's pretty cool. In the fresh water tank, we've got two of them. They are up in the frame rails as well. So it gives us uh, more storage space. And they're two 75 gallon tanks. Uh, they're actually on the front part here and they're in between the frame rails tucked up inside there. Uh, specially made so that uh, it would allow for us to have more floor space. Uh, really nice and very strong. The wa fresh water's on a hose reel. So, got my own little spigot right here. And that's for outside use. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now, that's pretty um, much our water system. <laughs> oh, yes. Forgetting something? Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. The uh, soda supply, the syrup supply. Uh, this one's almost done. <laughs> that's yours, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> and that's Sandra's. Uh, she goes through it. But uh, this is where they're stored, and then it goes back up, and then that's the CO2 tank. And we recently upgraded, upgraded to a 20-pound CO2 cylinder up from the measly 10-pound CO2 cylinder. And that little guy is a 5-pounder. He's more of an emergency. And then you've got the pumps, the syrup pumps. Yep. So where is the carbonator? Yeah, the carbonator is back here. And actually, you can see it right there. So it's a McCann carbonator right there. And that is what you'd find in a regular convenience store, a fast food place. And now all those tubes go from the carbonator to the water supply, uh, fed by the CO2 tank, and then eventually they go up top when Sandra wants a Diet Coke. Now what's really nice is... What, a soda machine's not nice in your no, uh, home? No, no, it's, it's wonderful, but you talked about the 150 gallons of fresh water yeah but what about how you filter it and the accumulator and the water pump and all the important oh, yeah. things to feed the soda machine yeah really so uh, yeah we've got five filters uh, basically uh, actually six technically I guess seven if you include the refrigerator as well I'm embarrassed to admit that 
Uh, so, yeah, so the soda machine's got its own filter. And so actually, okay, I'm going to start over. <laughs> We're going to start on the outside because I've got three filters coming into the trailer. And then two more filters right at the uh, start of where the water supply comes in. And then from that, a filter going directly to the soda machine. And then the refrigerator for the ice maker has another filter built into the refrigerator. And most residential ones have that. So, seven, oh, yeah. On the outside, I also have a descaler that's uh, a filter that helps to break up hard water and, uh, and, and decalcifies, I guess. I don't know if that's a word, but kind of decalcifies uh, with some of the mineral water that we run into. So, but you yeah. have a water softener, too. And I have a water softener as well. That's but, right. But the soda machine is plumbed separate from the water softener because it doesn't like water softeners. Yeah, that's exactly right. We had to do something special for the soda machine, of course. Uh, it actually likes a little more mineralized water. We found out a bunch of stuff uh, when we're putting in this soda machine, more than I cared to find out. And yeah, it had to, uh, didn't like to be softened. It liked a little more minerals in it. So we had to keep it sort of separate from the rest of the system. <sighs> yeah, and this is the vent. Yeah, there's hot air coming out of there. Uh, this is the vent for the soda chiller, the power hog as we referred to it on the tour. Uh, it, it is too, but that's where it's stationed and it's uh, blowing air out of here. Try to keep it cool. Traditional RVs will heat the basement through their furnace. We have that a little bit, but because this back part is separated by the axles, we don't have a furnace line run through here. So what we decided to do, and this gives us the ability to heat the downstairs basement separate from the upstairs. So we've got a couple of Wabasto diesel fired heaters, the same kind that actually they use in HDT trucks. And this will, we'll fire this one up. This is one for the back side. We've got another one in the front part of the uh, basement and we'll turn these on with the switches that are up in the cabinet inside the pot switches and these will fire up and blow uh, warm hot air depending on how hot we set it and keep the uh, basements nice and uh, warm and temperate during colder times uh, we've had uh, down to it's like minus 10, 10 minus 10 uh, zero degrees and we've had these running this basement back <laughs> here like 85 degrees yeah we had to actually turn it down and the front one was around 70 degrees and i said you know that's a little overkill uh we're just trying to keep it above freezing so it uh, really works out great and keeps these basements uh nice and uh, and warm all right so we're not all electric a lot of coaches this day and time are going all electric we're not we like to propane <laughs> <laughs> We like the boondock. But we like propane when we're boondocking. And to do that, <laughs> you need propane to make it more efficient and easier. And we've got propane. <laughs> but we've got it in a little different configuration, of course, because, well, we're... We're different. We're us. We're different. We always do things differently. We decided to go with composite tanks. Uh, they're lighter, about the same size as a 20-pound tank, but they hold a tad less. But they don't rust. They fit nicely side by side in the compartment here. And also in the smart car. It's really nice. We don't have to lie them down. They fit in there really beautifully. So They're really light. Even I can carry them with no problem. Exactly. You and look that like was... the Hulk when you're carrying them. Like they're <laughs> nothing. That's right. We were in Texas one time and I carried both of them and the guy was looking at me. I said, yeah, don't get him too impressed. These are pretty light. <laughs> and he lifted up. He's like, oh, man. So the people who fill them really like them. Now, did we want to did we want to talk about the uh, because it is composite? We haven't really had any issues filling them. Yeah, there are a few places, uh, U-Haul in particular, that uh, will not fill composite tanks. Um, I still have the DOT certificate on them, 
uh, just to assuage any fears. Mm -hmm. uh, few Costco's won't do it because of their program isn't set up because it's so light. But generally speaking, uh, that's only been a couple of instances yeah. where we've had an issue. Uh, otherwise, uh, tractor supply and such, uh, those guys will fill them no problem. And it's cheaper to fill than to an exchange, and that's one of the main oh, reasons yeah. we do it. Yeah, matter of fact, we've only seen one exchange with composite tanks. We were shocked. That was down in Key West. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, so we like to keep these, and we'll have to recertify them uh, every five years. But uh, these are really nice, and uh, we, we like having them. But you have to yeah. remember that in a windstorm, you don't leave them sitting out. Yeah, we were in Yuma, and I left one sitting out to remind me to go fill it, and a wind kicked up, and you saw it out the side window. You're like, uh, David, you need to go get your propane <laughs> go tank. Go fetch your tank. It's tumbling away. It was rolling away down the, the, the desert. People were looking at it like, what the heck? <laughs> what is that? Yeah. So what do we use the propane for? <laughs> so we've got... Uh, furnace that's propane and when we're in cold enough climates that we're boondocking uh, and we need some heat. Uh, we also have a line that runs to the living room that hooks up to a gas buddy mm -hmm. and that's really good. This, uh, this tank will supply that one. And then we also have a RV water heater. One of the few RV appliances actually that we do have. This will run off of gas and electric so when we're on full hookups, uh, we run on electric, and then when we're boondocking, uh, we'll turn it on, and that'll be gas. And we, we also, also mm -hmm. no, go on. Yeah, we also have up in the kitchen uh, a two-element uh, stove that's uh, propane, and then the other side is the induction. So um, on the furnace, uh, I forgot to mention we also have an electric. Uh, crossover on that which is cheap heat and so at the flip of a switch we can go from propane to electric but I don't think we've ever used the cheap heat other than to test it one time we really wish we had it in our DRV so we got it in Orion <laughs> and we've yet to use it because the heat pumps work fantastic yeah. even down to minus what 18 yeah and we, the heated floors yeah and the heated floors work good so in combination with those two when we're on hookups uh, it had his work great so uh, and then uh, I also have my little one pound refillable you don't use the composites to refill those no I've got another tank to refill those so I leave these in their holder to take care of the house uh, needs and that is for your grill yes the one pounders are for my grill because I like the flexibility of being able to put the grill anywhere and not be tied to a hose which is tied to uh, the trailer. And so, you've also, I like these. Yeah, and you've also used those. You can also put them in the gas buddy, and if we put them in the clamshell or if we need them to yes. the heat of the gas buddy someplace else, then yeah. that makes it more flexible. Yeah, exactly. So that really is just a lot of flexibility. And I've got five of them uh, just to make sure that when they do run out, I've got a spare. And then when I get down needing to fill about uh, two or three, then I'll get the tank out and I'll fill them like I did out in Punta Gorda. That's right. I did that, that's a video. And that's our propane system. We talked about propane tanks outside. The propane line comes inside. This right here was done specifically for boondocking. And more importantly, specifically for Sandra. Because when it gets a little chilly, this back area here, we can't put on the electric fireplace. And we can't put on the electric heat pumps, they use too much. So during dry camping, boondocking areas, this is our heat back here. And we got this idea from a friend of ours. So I'm gonna open this access panel. And we've got a line back here that I'm gonna feed through. And we're gonna to connect to our gas buddy, which is indoor related or <laughs> related, it's indoor approved. And the propane line comes through here. A little mouse hole right there. And we feed this 
propane line through there and then it connects here. And this way you're not having to refill all, uh, refill your little bottles all the time. Yeah, and this runs directly off the tanks. Mm -hmm. And we'll turn this on. It gives us great heat back here. It's super efficient. We don't smell the propane. Like I said, it's rated for indoor use and it keeps everything nice and toasty warm while we're boondocking and it's a little chilly outside. Mm -hmm. And that keeps you happy. It does. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about all this later. <laughs> David's dilemma. On the subject of propane, this, believe it or not, is a dual fuel stovetop. Propane, induction, electric. 240 volt. 240 induction household. Yeah. It's Fisher Paykel, but you will not find this in America, more than likely. I had a dilemma during the build process, and it was all because of Sandra and her particular nature. A lot of RVs have a dual fuel. They have induction and they have propane on, on each side. But they don't match like this. But isn't that pretty? Look how it is. Now, ideally, I would like for this to be all one solid surface. No. And you did find one. I did find one that was one solid surface, but they wouldn't ship it into the United States. They wouldn't States. sell it to us. Yes. So this is actually two separate units. This induction unit, no problemo. We could get it here in the States, get it at Lowe's, get it anywhere. No issues. It's twin sister. Yeah, not available in the States. It is available in Australia, but they wouldn't sell it to us. It is available in the United Kingdom. And I actually found a guy at an appliance center in London, outside of London, and I called him from the States and I said, I want to buy this stove. And he's like, okay. I said, but I'm in the United States. He goes, what? We've never sold the United States before. I said, well, you're going to this time because I got to keep my wife happy. And he's like, okay, I understand. So this came from the UK. They boxed it up and shipped it to us, except the first iteration was incorrect. I had ordered for natural gas or propane. They shipped me natural gas. They redid the regulator that's underneath, and this is what we got. It matches. It it's got symmetrical. Symmetrical. It Sandra is happy now. I am. I love <laughs> it. It's awesome. So this was more than just a week or two of my time getting this uh, in during the build process, but we got it. And it works great. Whew. Man, that was a lot to cover. We well, hope you guys enjoyed it. We really struggled with the title of this. Uh, what do we call this? Uh, it's, it was a basement tour, but some of it was on the roof with the solar. Uh, so we weren't sure what to call it. You know, when you go to Disney, it's the backstage tour when you get to see behind the scenes, so to speak. Uh, the Wizard of Oz was, you know, peering behind the curtain. And we've got some friends that have uh, said, well, it's like lifting up the skirt. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not sure what you want to call it, uh, but whatever you want to call it, I hope you enjoyed it. This gives you a little bit of a sense of what uh, Orion, our home, is like for us to boondog in. And it's really, really nice. Uh, we designed it and we built it uh, for boondocking. Uh, it handles it really well and we thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope you guys enjoyed it too and we'll see you next week. <laughs>